So units of temperature. There's four main units of temperature. We're going to stick to three of them. Kelvin, we're going we're gonna to note this T sub K. And it is the absolute scale for the metric system. Celsius, which is the metric unit of measurement that most people who use the metric system all the time use. And then Fahrenheit, which is the temperature most Americans use if we're going to be talking about degrees in temperature. So we want to be able to go from one, one scale next, and we're just going to use these subscripts K, C, and F to denote the different temperatures just to keep to know what we're talking about. So if we want to go from to Celsius from Kelvin, we can go T sub C is equal to T sub K minus 273.15. So it's a fairly simple calculation. If we want to go T sub F, so we want to get to Fahrenheit from Celsius, we go T sub F is equal to T sub C times 9 fifths plus 32. So that's a little more difficult to do in your head if you want to do it on the fly. And then we can go directly from Kelvin to Fahrenheit. So we want to go T sub F is equal to T sub K minus 273.15 times 9 fifths plus 32. And then if we want to go from Fahrenheit back to Celsius, let's say for some reason we want to do that, we would do Tc is equal to Tf minus 32 times 5 ninths. So simple, simple equations, we've all done this before, but a little reminder on how to go holding this temperature calculation. Now, I've never had someone come up and ask me uh, what is the temperature in terms of Kelvin. It is the absolute scale, so the equations all work best using these, uh, this scale. We can modify the equation to work in other scales, but it's always easiest to work in the absolute scale. But let's say we have our uh, T sub K in terms of Kelvin is equal to 342.83 and we want to know what it is in Celsius and in Fahrenheit. So we can say temperature in Celsius is equal to 342.83 minus 273.15 is equal to 69.67 degrees Celsius. And I want to say, okay, is this answer that we got reasonable? Right? Most of us are pretty familiar with Celsius. We know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, so therefore this temperature somewhere relatively far away from the fire is almost close to the boiling temperature of water, but not quite there. So we know a fire is hot, we know we're kind of far away. So it's, it's a hot temperature, but not super hot, not super cold, so the reasonableness check uh, gets the reasonableness checks out. Let's say we think it's reasonable. So then we can do the same thing in terms of Fahrenheit. T Fahrenheit I don't know that extra, this one F, is equal to T Fahrenheit going directly from Kelvin is equal to 342.83 minus 273.15 times 9 fifths plus 32 and that's going to be equal to 157.37 degrees Fahrenheit. We can do the same reasonableness check if you're more comfortable on this scale. We know that water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're almost getting close to the water boiling in terms of Fahrenheit, but not there yet. So the reasonableness check, once again, passes. So that means T sub G is equal to 568.9 Kelvin. And then if we do our temperature changes, we can get T sub G, or our, our units change is equal to 295.75 degrees C, or 564.35 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if we look at, uh, let's say, 
we were we were looking at this value, and we calculated this value, or or we had this value written down, and some and we hadn't done these these units changes already, and we were out in the field, and we were talking to somebody, and they were like, well, what is that in Fahrenheit, or what is that in Celsius, and you don't have a calculator, and I can't do five ninths times this number plus thirty two in my head, so we could we can make some back of the envelope approximations to these temperature changes. We can say, okay, 273.15 is really close to 300. So if we take this number and subtract three, and this is really close to, let's say, 600. So if we take 600 minus 300, we get approximately 300 degrees Celsius. And we're like, that's not bad. It's, it's, it's close. I mean, it's, it's sort of a coincidence in this place that it's that close. But you can get on the ballpark. And then if you look at this equation, where you take T sub C times 9 fifths plus 32 to get from Celsius to Fahrenheit, this number is awfully close to 2. And if we're assuming that we're bigger than, let's say, 100 degrees Celsius, and we're working with big numbers, we can probably neglect this 32 because it's not going to be that big of a deal. So if we take, let's say, this 300 value. We say, all right, we're going to assume we're going to estimate it as 300 Celsius, and then we multiply that by two. We can say it's approximately 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, these are both wrong, but for a back of the envelope estimation, they're not bad. I mean, we're not talking about combustor temperatures here. We're talking about compartment fire, uh, ceiling height, ceiling, ceiling jet, upper layer temperature approximations. So we're not trying to get down to the degree of, of, of precision, we're just trying to get on the order of magnitude. We're like, will plastic melt? Will aluminum melt? How, how much radiation is there going to be? Are we going to get burned in 3 seconds? Are we going to get burned in 10 seconds? How, how, how bad is it going to be? How, on what order of magnitude are we dealing with? So this is a reasonable approximation to do, in my opinion, if you're if you don't have a calculator or time to make the calculation.